And we're starting off with SmackDown, which saw the return of The Rock in what is believed to have been a one-off appearance by the Brahma Bull, one that WWE didn't exactly plan accordingly for. It was reported after SmackDown that WWE had to edit several segments and matches for the rest of the show, as The Rock's segment ran long, something WWE really should have expected. The Rock has a track record of taking his time with long segments because he can do that and is aware that WWE will afford him certain liberties that other wrestlers simply don't receive. A tenured member of the WWE creative team said that The Rock's segment ran very long, with blame being placed on Triple H, Bruce Prichard, Ed Koski, and Ryan Callahan for not figuring that out in advance. The segment in question lasted nearly 20 minutes, if you include Pat McAfee's segment with Austin Theory prior to the Great One's electrifying music hitting. The Rock's return may have caused havoc for the rest of the show, but it's impossible to ignore The Great One's drawing power with 2.445 million fans tuning in for the show. 834,000 of those fans were in the treasured 18-49 demographic, up 24% from last week's show, no doubt thanks to word of mouth about The Rock's return. As to when we'll see the Brahma Bull next, that remains to be seen, but hopefully next time Triple H and his team will be better prepared for the return of the Hollywood Megastar. It was during an appearance on the Pat McAfee show this week that The Rock teased facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40, saying he's open to the match many hoped to see this past April. Instead, this year's show concluded with Reigns standing tall over Cody Rhodes, and with The Rock's possible return, what does this future hold for the American Nightmare? PW Insider reports that despite The Rock's recent comments, Cody Rhodes is WWE's priority right now, and there has been nothing agreed with The Rock other than a meeting to discuss ideas. Many believe that Cody's loss this year only happened because WWE are saving his big win for WrestleMania 40 in a huge moment that would be fitting of the milestone event. Triple H is said to be stacking the card for the show for the 40th year milestone, and right now, Reigns vs. Rhodes remains the plan though plans in WWE are always subject to change. Right now, John Cena is enjoying his longest return to WWE that we've seen in years, which has seen him compete at the Superstar Spectacle, host Payback, and wrestle after this week's SmackDown. Of course, all good things must come to an end, and Cena's return is set to end later this year, but it won't be long after before we see the 16-time WWE World Champion again. That's according to BWE, who reports that Cena is slated to compete at the 2024 Royal Rumble event, and this time, the plan is for the wrestling icon to face Solo Sokoa. WWE has already been laying the groundwork for such a match, with this week's SmackDown seeing Cena as the guest of the Grayson Waller effect, a segment interrupted by Sokoa himself. The 30-year-old former North American champion superkicked Cena and unleashed a beatdown on the veteran WWE star alongside Jimmy Uso and would tease another confrontation after the show. On Instagram, Sokoa shared an image of Cena having a face-off with Sokoa's relative, the late Umaga, and it's worth remembering that Cena and Umaga faced off at the Royal Rumble event in 2007. In just over a year since his main roster call-up in Cardiff, Sokoa has worked with some of WWE's top stars and has headlined premium live events. And will Cena be next for Solo? Time will tell. Are you excited at the prospect of Sokoa and Cena facing off this January? Or would you have a different opponent in mind for both men? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Over to AEW as Keith Lee is still looking for that big breakthrough ever since his return from injury, and that breakthrough certainly didn't happen this week. On Collision, Lee was part of a backstage segment, but in a major production botch, AEW aired a behind-the-scenes clip revealing that this was Lee's 22nd attempt at the promo. The botch went viral on social media, with some questioning how this error made it into the show, and some suggested it may have been a deliberate part of the show and not a botch at all. It's hard to imagine why AEW would want fans to believe that Lee is bad at delivering a promo, but whatever the case may be, Lee reacted to what aired with an LOL on Twitter. Fans also reacted, with some saying whoever caused this error is in trouble, while others said this is nothing to laugh about, blasting the segment as embarrassing. AEW seemingly tried to cover it up with a segment later in the show, in which the behind-the-scenes situation ahead of a Ricky Starks interview was aired, but fans weren't exactly buying it. Fans had high hopes for Lee when he joined AEW, but other than a brief tag team title run, he's done little of note in the company. And what do you make of what happened this week? Let us know below. 
In August, RVD arrived in AEW, and now the former WWE and ECW World Champion will be returning to the promotion next week. With next week's AEW Collision happening in Rob's home state of Michigan, it's fitting that Van Dam will be on the show, and we'll have to see who he plans to hit with a 5-star frog splash. It was during this week's Dynamite that MJF tried to mathematically prove why Samoa Joe can't beat him with a promo that parodied the infamous Steiner Math promo from TNA Sacrifice 2008. MJF's hilarious rendition of the promo went viral online, with fans loving the comments by the AEW World Champion, and when speaking to the insider, Tony Khan said that the idea all came from MJF. That particular one was MJF. Wrestling is all about collaborations, and I really enjoy having that connection and the ability to create stories. We were putting down ideas for this week's shows, and he did say that, and it was a great idea. That's how I like to put stories together. Sit down with MJF and Adam Cole, the three of us, and talk. I've shot videos with the two of them, and they have this great partnership. The irony is that after Steiner cut his promo proving Samoa Joe couldn't beat him, Joe would do just that, retaining the TNA World Heavyweight Championship in the process. Next week, Joe will look to add the AEW World Championship to his vast collection of accolades, but according to MJF, such a win is a statistical improbability for the veteran. It's fair to say that Andrade El Idolo, formerly Andrade Cien Almas, has had an underwhelming AEW run ever since his debut, which was a big deal at the time. He was also mismanaged in WWE's main roster after an outstanding NXT run with great matches and moments, but on this week's collision, Andrade got quite the win. Andrade used the figure eight submission to capture a much needed victory over the returning Scorpio Sky, with his amazing gesture for his wife Charlotte Flair going viral all over the internet. Following the match, El Idolo got greeted by Jay White in the Bullet Club Gold, and White had some harsh words for the former WWE star, sowing the seeds for a future feud. If so, this week's win could be a sign of things to come for Andrade, who, like Keith Lee, is waiting to go to the next level in AEW, and that may come with the help of Bullet Club Gold. While Andrade got a big win on Collision, the same can't be said for the Blackpool Combat Club, who took a surprising loss to the team of Ricky Starks and Big Bill. While Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli had the upper hand for much of the match, Starks managed to score a pinfall on the American Dragon, handing Brian his first loss since returning from injury. This is Danielson's first loss in over half a year, with the former WWE World Champion previously losing to MJF at Revolution, and he'll hope to recover from this loss next week. The September 23rd collision will see Danielson face Starks in a Texas death match as the American Dragon seeks to prove that his loss this week was simply a one-off. There was plenty of excitement from this week's collision, which also saw AEW World Tag Team Champions FTR retain against the Iron Savages. John Silver got a win over Anthony Bowens, possibly placing the Dark Order in line for a shot at the trio's titles, while Aussie Open would flatten the team of PB Smooth and Wes Barkley. Post-match, the pair challenged FTR to a match at Wrestle Dream on October 1st, one year to the day after their acclaimed match at New Japan's Royal Quest 2. The Righteous got an impressive victory over the Hardys, and the main event of the show saw TBS champion Chris Statlander retain against Britt Baker. In 2001, John Laurinaitis would join WWE, and throughout his tenure with the company, would remain a highly controversial figure due to his alleged backstage politics. Last year, the man who had wished many the best in their future endeavors was himself released due to his alleged involvement in the Vince McMahon hush money scandal. One person who worked closely with Laurinaitis and did not enjoy it was Teddy Long, who recently spoke about his disdain for Big Johnny. Speaking to Sports Kita, the Hall of Famer spoke about both his issues with Laurinaitis and his low pay with the company, saying that even a lowly referee was making more than him. He said, I'm not afraid to call John Laurinaitis' name. This man made my life miserable. I couldn't ask for more money, he never gave me raises, I never got any money, and as I said, there was a referee there who was making more money than me, and I'm the general manager and head of the show. So he and Mark Carano did a lot of nasty things to me. Long was once a referee himself and in the interview, recalled a time when he was fired by Laurinaitis for a botch during a match between Christian and Test. Long explained that this botch was hardly his fault, as a plan had been deliberately put in place to try and get him fired. He explained, After I started refereeing there, I come to find out that John Laurinaitis was in charge then too, at that time. 
He sends me up to Hawaii. I refereed a match in Hawaii between Christian and Test, God rest his soul. What I did, I went and I made the count, one, two, you know, one of the guys didn't kick out, so I went down to three, so they tried to say that I screwed the finish up, so Johnny fired me. I had the opportunity to see Test before he died and he said, hey man, they set you up. I didn't know that they were trying to get me to help them to fire you. The WWE Hall of Famer also recalled a time when Vince McMahon said he was going to send a private plane to take Long to a show, which was actually just McMahon's own plane. Nevertheless, traveling on the boss's plane would have been quite the luxury for Long, who alleged that Laurinaitis blocked it at the last moment, leaving Long to drive a huge distance to make it to a show. Long claimed that Laurinaitis himself approached WWE's merchandise department and said that action figures and merch related to Teddy should not be made due to a so-called lack of demand. Long said that Laurinaitis also said this to his face and questioned if he would have received more pieces of merch in WWE had his fellow former general manager not been operating backstage. Teddy then looked at another prominent African-American name in wrestling, that being Devon Dudley, and claimed that the latter faced racism during his time with WWE. Devon said earlier this month that a prominent WWE figure was openly racist to him, but didn't name who, but said that the WWE exec made it clear that he disliked Devon because of his race. Devon even stated that Paul Heyman, Tommy Dreamer, Spike Dudley, and Bubba Ray Dudley witnessed the treatment he faced by this executive, though none have confirmed the claim. In his interview, Long suggested that Bubba didn't take Devon's side in the matter out of fear of losing his job, but again, it's worth stating that Bubba hasn't publicly given his side of the story. Teddy Long was deservedly inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2017 for his contributions to wrestling, which included being a manager, general manager, referee, and occasional competitor. As for John Laurinaitis, it's unlikely we'll ever see him work for WWE or any wrestling company again. As for all his alleged treatment of Long, it was the beloved Teddy who has had the last laugh. John Moxley loves inflicting violence upon others, but also loves it when the same is done to him. All of this has taken its toll on his body, and it appears a doctor informed him that he has the arthritis of a 70-year-old. While speaking on the Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast, John Moxley said, the doctor last year told me that I have the arthritis of a 70-year-old man, and that was quite humbling. That was a year or two ago, so by now it's like a 72-year-old man. I don't move very well in the mornings, but thank God shows are at night because by then I'm pretty loosened up. If the wrestling shows took place in the morning, like Saturday morning superstars, if we started doing those like early territory style studio TV tapings on like Sunday mornings, I would retire. I'd be done. Lots of times I can't even move before noon. It's high time John Moxley respects his body and starts working on a more relaxed schedule. What do you think of what John Moxley said? Do you believe Moxley will have to retire earlier than expected due to all the wear and tear on his body? Let us know in the comments. Now Triple H is best known as a WWE superstar and for his many roles backstage with the company, but this week the game showed off his acting chops. WWE fans who tuned into Showtime's Billions will have been surprised to see Triple H cameo as himself during this week's episode, giving advice to Paul Giamatti's character Chuck. This isn't the first time a WWE superstar has appeared on the show, as both The Rock and Becky Lynch have appeared in the past, and the game's performance on Billions was quite the sight to see. And we're ending with Marty Wright, better known as The Boogeyman, and it's been quite some time since we saw the horrifying character on TV. This week, though, Wright attended SmackDown with people close to him, and on social media thanked Vince McMahon and Triple H for the show and making me forever young. With appearances by The Rock and John Cena, Wright had quite a show at ringside, and we're sure the fans sat near him were thankful for a notable lack of clock smashing and worm eating by the former superstar.